Welcome to an advanced clinical care tutorial. This series of tutorials will cover aspects of caring for patients with complicated HIV and TB disease in Department of Health facilities in South Africa, compiled by the NICD and the National Department of Health and facilitated by Dr. Madeleine Muller, Clinical Advisor for Beyond Zero. This is module two of eight modules on the prevention, identification and management of cryptococcal meningitis. This module will cover key aspects of the South African Cryptococcal Meningitis Prevention Program. Let us start by outlining a typical patient visiting his primary health care clinic. Mr. Zizi is a 25-year-old man who tests positive for HIV at his local clinic and the professional nurse takes a routine CD4 count as a baseline test. On returning a week later, they find that the CD4 count is only 20 cells per microliter. With the new NDOH policy of reflex testing of CRAG on all patients with a CD4 less than 100, the blood result also shows that he is cryptococcal antigen positive, but he has no other symptoms. As outlined in the Module 1, this confirms that Mr. Zizi has reactivated cryptococcus in his blood, and he is at high risk of developing disseminated cryptococcal disease most likely cryptococcal meningitis. So how do we help Mr. Zizi not get sick? This is a simplified algorithm that gives an overview of our approach to the prevention of cryptococcal meningitis. First, we have to screen all patients with a CD4 under 100 for cryptococcal antigen in the blood. Those patients who are cryptococcal antigen positive can be treated with antifungals, which will dramatically reduce the possibility of the disease progressing to cryptococcal meningitis and disseminated disease. Let's look at how effective this strategy is. This was a study published in the Lancet by Mfinanga et al. in 2015, where standard care was compared with a package of reflex CRAG screening, but also enhanced community support with weekly visits from a community healthcare worker for four weeks. There was a dramatic and significant reduction in the mortality in the second group. So what do we mean by reflexive test and treat? Up until recently, patients diagnosed with HIV would first have to return for the result of the CD4 count. And if the CD4 was found to be less than 100, then another blood was taken for cryptococcal antigen. This had led to delays in the initiation of patients in the population that need ARVs the most. Under the new reflexive test and treat policy, the NHLS will test all patients with a CD4 under 100 automatically for cryptococcal antigen. This reduces the number of visits and ensures earlier initiation of ART in patients that are CRAG negative. The NHLS is committed to have reflex test and treat rolled out to all laboratories in the country by the end of October 2016. This is what the new results look like. Just to note that the NHLS keeps the CRAG sample for seven days, but no longer unless requested by the healthcare worker. The option of reflex test and treat was already mentioned in the National Consolidated Guideline of 2015, which says that all HIV-infected adults with a CD4 count of under 100 cells should be screened for cryptococcal disease before ART is started by using either reflex laboratory or clinician-initiated testing. This is the current complete algorithm for the prevention, diagnosis and management of both asymptomatic cryptococcal antigenemia as well as cryptococcal meningitis and can be found in the National Consolidated HIV Guideline of 2015. We will be exploring cryptococcal meningitis in future modules, but I would like to emphasize the management of the asymptomatic patient. It's important to note that it's still good practice to offer the patient a lumbar puncture if possible as many as 20% of patients may even have subclinical cryptococcal meningitis. But this is not feasible in many of our rural facilities. So if we return to Mr. Zizi, who is at a high risk of cryptococcal meningitis, 
The primary healthcare nurse can treat him with fluconazole 800 milligrams daily for two weeks as an outpatient, then reduce it down to 400 milligrams for two months as a continuation phase, and finally give him prophylaxis of 200 milligrams of fluconazole a day until the CD4 count is more than 206 months apart. He needs to be on fluconazole for at least a year. ARVs can be started after two weeks of having commenced the antifungal therapy. In conclusion, here once again the dictum counts that prevention is better than cure. Thank you.